Uh, nice to be here again. Some of you know me from the last year's event. Uh, after the story of a contributor, I'm going to tell you the story of an integrator. Because normally we don't do such projects. We basically design our infrastructures in terms of bus, uh, electrical and everything. This time, uh, we were called by one of our suppliers because this developer had a specific request in terms of an IP video intercom solution. So that's how we got in the project, because our supplier did not uh, offer the, the technical solution. So we got in contact with the developer, and we basically found out that he was trying to develop these 32 houses, which were marketed as a high-end uh, quality residential complex. Uh, basically, they vary as a surface between 200 and 400 square meters, because there are various types of houses. And um, he had all sorts of things going on. The, the, his suppliers, his uh, uh, workers and everyone was uh, putting in technology without any integration. So it was crazy. We, we got there and nothing was uh, correlated or uh, coordinated because there was not, nobody with the, the developer to advise him on, on what to do. So we took this, uh, this uh, challenge and said, OK, let's see how, what we can do here. So we had these systems which were already there, installed, like um, a hybrid solar inverter with batteries, photovoltaic cells, blah, blah, and... Oh, sorry. We had a, a gas boiler uh, heating the water for the underfloor heating with a multi-room uh, climate control. We had an air conditioning system. We had the IP video intercom plus the additional IP camera. We had a motorized gate, garage doors, the lawn watering system, and the marketed automated lighting systems, which were less automated than it should have been. <laughs> So those were the needs. When we got to the developer, this was what he was doing. He was telling his clients, uh, these are your apps, you have to do this, you have to do that. And that nothing was coordinated. And we, we, she, he couldn't actually get the advantages of having, for example, the solar power inverter. You know, because there was no decision going from the solar power inverter to the uh, air conditioning or to the um, gas boiler. And we, we had to, to think about it and to offer a solution. It was obvious that OpenHab was the easiest one. Because uh, the number of bindings and the, uh, the availability of, um, of so many technologies in one package was there. And we said, look, we, want, we can do this. Let's give it a chance. And here, it started the back and forth with the producers of equipment. And I'll tell you why. So we had kind of, this was the hardware that was integrated, because this, this was the only available uh, enabled communication devices. So we had the Voltronic Hybrid Solar, the Shelly. Shelly is a company from Bulgaria that produces this based on uh, this, uh, they call it uh, wireless relays, something like this. Uh, they are based, they are Texas Instrument CC chips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. With the Mongoose OS uh, embedded in, uh, in them. Uh, then we had Hikvision. Hikvision is a huge problem because they are basically a, a closed software company. They don't want to disclose anything. They don't have any APIs. They have an SDK that you can use in order to do some stuff. But basically, they, they don't sell. Uh, the product, for example, the video intercom, the door station, uh, unless you buy the, the, the indoor station, you cannot connect it. So we, it was a challenge for us to do that, and we did it. Then we, that's Daikin. Daikin, another story. Daikin does a lot of really ugly stuff. Uh, no official support from them. I wrote them many, many times. They said they cannot disclose their API. We basically sniffed everything. We, were, we used the man-in-the-middle method, which everyone knows, and we sniffed the packets from what they were having from their app to the, their interfaces. Problem with them is that since uh, last year, they've done about four firmware updates to the Wi-Fi cards and uh, basically ruined everything. We had to rewrite everything again all the time. 
So again, my, my same advice to you, don't update. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we needed some hardware in order to integrate all this stuff, okay? So the hardware being the central processing unit, which is a server that where OpenHab would reside on. Then we needed a good Wi-Fi infrastructure because most of the devices were communicating over Wi-Fi. Commercial routers and Wi-Fi access points are not really the best thing you can have in your house if you want to manage the things professionally. So we'd use Microtech for that, which is a company, a Lithu Lithuanian company, that offers this equipment that has uh, uh, API accessible services through their equipment. So you basically control from SSID to the clients, you see everything, and it's really great for us you know, in order to monitor the infrastructure. Because it happened that those relays that you showed me uh, disconnected from the network, okay? or some of them were even connected, but did not, had, uh, did not have an IP, and so on. So in order to keep monitored, you need um, access to the registration table in the Wi-Fi, and so on. So we needed this. Then there's this, uh, we used an Intel NUC, not because of OpenHab, because OpenHab does not require such, so much computing power, but because of the video surveillance software, which is really demanding. Because there, we do motion detection, we do um, some, some, sometimes we do recording, and so on. And the streams, the, the management of the streams, the RSTP streams, require quite a lot of uh, processing power all the time. In terms of software, it was easy. Linux, of course. And then all the other packages, the video surveillance software, which is also open source. The SIP client, because uh, the video door station has an embedded asterisk um, server, SIP server. And uh, we needed to work in the Hikvision SDK in order to allow us to control the Hikvision device, which is not freely um, accessible. Also, OpenHab, of course. And all this needed to be on a fixed display unit because of the video intercom capability. So we chose a seven-inch PoE wall-mounted tablet, Chinese one. I don't know the, <laughs> the producer. Uh, so, OpenHab. So there are now 32 instances running. Uh, each house has its, its own on-premises uh, server. We started in uh, version 2.2, but because of the changes to, to the core, we wanted to switch to 2.3 in order not to use persistence for getting the trigger of a member of a group. So we switched to 2.3. But it's going to stay like that <laughs> forever. <laughs> no more upgrades. Then, and we have the, the bindings, the HTTP, which is used for the Shelly devices. They send the JSON telegrams, I think. Sorry? Yes, I know, but now, because the, the version I have, it's, you have the Shelly 1, I have the Shelly 2 and Shelly 4 Pro, which is different. Now they use MQTT, and it's even open source. They have a serial port there. Take a look. It's called Shelly 1. I know the owner of the company. I went to his place. <laughs> he called me. Uh, SNMP, SNMP binding, sorry, there's a mistake. That is used for the... Um, for the monitoring of the solar power inverter where we get all the info necessary in order to decide if we start the underfloor heating or we uh, stay only on the air conditioning systems for the heating. Then we have the, the Astro, of course, and the weather binding. In, in terms of persistence, uh, in this project, we don't log so much. We only need the last states stored. We don't want graphics. The developer did not ask for it. If one of the clients wants it, we can do it. But we, we don't want to do it, because it requires maintenance for the database all the time. In the UI, thanks, Yannick, it's HAP panel. <laughs> uh, rules are a lot of stories there, because there are all sorts of rules. We, we designed our rules to be like modules. So we, if you want the light module, then the presence module, then uh, the climate control module, and so on. 
and we only put them all together, and that's it. It works. Deploying 32 instances of such a setup, you will ask me how much it took. Not too much. Only, the, the, only, the only thing that takes a lot of time is configuring the equipment, the field equipment. That means the Daikin interfaces, because they have a procedure of getting into an AP mode, then you get them back in a client mode, and so on. So that's the only time it takes. The rest is copy-paste for us. Um, then we have the optional request modules, like we have end users that said, OK, this developer built me a very nice house. Now I would like a multi-room audio system. We have that. So it's doable. And this is how the UI take, looks like. We, we've designed it uh, as a widget, a per room widget, we call it. So there are not many widgets there. Actually, what you see here is three widgets all together. And <clears throat> the, the way the items are created is that each widget checks in that room to see what services it has. And it puts it in the UI at the corresponding point. So we have the, the lights there, the climate control there, the scenes, the various information, if there are any, and if the item exists, and then uh, the, the, the blind module and so on. So the UI is not custom made. It's one UI for everybody. And it, they only ch it only checks in the item registry. That's it. And the video intercom widget. Because here it was a real problem. And again, don't update. I had a firmware update from Higvision. Ruined my whole work. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really, really bad. And here how the... The stuff looks like. So there are basically eight modules, four houses in each module for space efficiency. And um, each house is independent, independent as, as a structure. So they're not, they don't have a common wall. So they're totally independent, even from energy point of view. Actually, right now, each house produces more than 50% of the uh, energy that they need, that they consume. What we do is, for example, we have two modes of uh, climate control. One is called the economic mode, where if there is a production from the photovoltaic cells, then we don't start the gas boiler. We only use the um, air conditioning system for the uh, heating, because that consumes electricity. Um, so that's about it. Any questions? Feel free to, please. Yes. It's, it's a stream that we get from the video surveillance. Yes, we did it, our own, yes, of course. Inside HEP panel, injecting scripts. So what's the client? The SIP client is a JavaScript, SIP, uh, SIP ML5, it's called. It's a JavaScript uh, client. Works well. But the stream, uh, it, it, it's taken from the video surveillance software which is uh, Shinobi right now, also open source. Yes, please. How do you stop the users from playing around with Hub Panel? What do you mean, stop well, them? Starting their own widgets and extending... No, no, oh, that is... Uh, we lock the configuration in Hub Panel. We, they cannot access it. It's not editable. They cannot edit. They only access the views that we allow them to do. That is easy. Yes, please. Um, is it just the installation that you are responsible for, or also uh, a kind of maintenance over time? So if that would be maintenance, my question would then be, OK, uh, would then be, um, is there any backup or restore mechanism that you've implemented? Yes, of course. How? Uh, Every single image, because we don't have persistence, okay? I mean, we don't have historic states. That one of the, the moment we basically install the system, we start it up, we have uh, an exact copy of what we did there. So if any backup is needed, we have it, physical backup, because we don't need anything else. They have a scene module, for example, where they uh, set their own scenes 
Okay, so we don't need to be there to set a scene or whatever. They do it by their own. If they want to uh, have uh, lighting, get this light on, this light off, the blinds to go down or up, they do it by, the, by themselves. That they lose at this moment. That they lose. So they lose their own custom scenes, but nothing else. <laughs> the rest is copied. No, 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 no. No. Sorry? Yes. Nothing else. And they lose the scenes, they lose everything. Yeah, 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 exactly. They lose everything they've done by themselves, yes. But not the system. The system is copied. Okay. So basically it takes, I don't know, 20 minutes, put it back on, even less. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like automobiles, homes have a completely different life cycle than electronics. Yes. So, I mean, it's nice to buy a new home that's all fancy, but in... In 20 years, is this, any of this going to be functional? Uh, if you ask me, I don't think so. No. No. <laughs> no, because as I told you, we found so many bits and pieces, and we tried to put them together to have a working solution. If you ask me if there's a guy coming there and taking work, going on a relay switch, or on a relay module, that Wi-Fi and resets it, or does a firmware update, then it's no longer integ integratable in, in our platform. It cannot, you know? So basically, it's a, more or less a human factor intervention problem. If it stays like this, yes, it will work. <laughs> if it stays like this, it will work for t 20 years or whatever the life cycle of the device is. Um, you said to, um, you have modules. In your solution, yes. yes. Do you sell the modules singular to? Uh, do you sell everything together to house? I'm s we are selling the services. You're just selling the services. We are selling the services. The software is open source. They can get it from yeah, but wherever, I mean, wherever. The customer cannot order another module for better presence detection or anything. Well, if they want to do it, they're they're free to do it. I can give them all the credentials and everything, and they can do it. Of course. Oh, if okay. they want to, to get inside. But I, I, I strongly advise them, if they're not professionals, not to do it. <laughs> if they don't know what they're doing, it's better not. Uh, thank you for a wonderful talk. Um, how do you monitor the correct operation of these houses? Well, uh, we have a heartbeat link for each open hub instance. If the heartbeat link is, uh, is gone, then somebody has to go there and see what, what it is. Yes, we thought about this, of course, and we will, we will at some point, but at this moment, the owners of the homes, because there are 32 owners, have to organize themselves into a form, a, um, a law-enforced form, that they can pay common services. Okay? Because someone needs to pay for that VPS. Someone needs to pay for the guard at the, the front gate. Right now, they, are not, they don't have a legal entity that can contract services. Of course, we will use Open Health Club. Sell that service. Yes, of course. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lukash. Hi. I have a very basic question yes. about users. Yes. Uh, do you have any first impressions, and if they are happy with this poor UI? Well, it's really, it's a real, a really good question. Well, the UI has been, uh, has been designed together with the developer. The end user did not have any input. They basically received a house with that installed in it, and that's it. Uh, as a first, my impression is that most of them are really, really scared, especially the non-technical guys. Uh, but uh, fortunately, there were some technical guys. We, of course, the, the second day when we installed, for example, a house, we would get like 10 calls, but in a, in a week, no more calls. They, they get it. It's pretty uh, easy to use. That's why the developer said, don't write anything, put only icons and stuff, because they will, they will call you like um, so many times, you, you cannot even imagine. And it was true, even with icons. For example, for the lights, we make pictures for every single light and put it in UI. And that's, that's the light, push it, push it, you know? And that's it. So we don't, we don't have need to explain them, look, now this is the light number one from room number two. No, it's the picture, you see it, come on. <laughs> and that's it. 
Okay, thanks. How do you prepare for uh, hardware failures? Did you buy a whole stack of Well, the uh, developer hardware? has at this, at this moment a stock, of, especially of the Shelly relays, because we had huge problems yeah. with those in the beginning. We, now they have a better firmware, but uh, it was a real problem. They would disconnect from our Wi-Fi, and if we even had a, a bigger problem than the equipment itself. Next to, to, to this, uh, this plot of land, there's an antenna. And for the first two houses at the entrance, huge Wi-Fi interferences, okay. white noise, no SSD, SS, uh, SSID broadcasting, nothing. So it happened that from 3 to 6 p.m., we had no possibility of connecting anything in the Wi-Fi. It happened, yes. And in case your stock is depleted, the, do you then have there's, there's a contract them? between the developer and the Shelly company, the old robotics or oh, whatever. So and do you have this for everything that yes. you have in the house? Yes. Yes. How long? How many years? I don't know. Oh, okay. Not <laughs> not our scope of work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if you ask me, I wouldn't do this again. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a future-proof solution. It's not a future-proof. We ba we basically uh, engineers at heart, not software engineer engineers. So we are HVC and M&E engineers. So what we do is in, we try to install the best stable uh, solution. We come from KNX a lot. We do a lot of KNX still, and even in the future we'll do much more KNX than this Wi-Fi solution. Because Wi-Fi is not really reliable. But we, we managed to get something on track <laughs> at this point. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.